Hey dude, um, I was involved with this discussion online over the last week and um, it involved about something about adapting moves. So I thought I'd do a brief video on one of the moves we were talking about and if there's interest I'll do other ones. But this is the sort of thing that I've brought up in the courses but some of you may have forgotten so I'm going to use these as little memory jolts about how important it is for us to adapt the moves in the learning phase of our Tai Chi as we're familiarising ourselves with new moves. Now there are certain postures in the form where this will always be a bit awkward because the complexity of the move or the coordination or the balance demands are that much greater during that particular pose. So I'm going to pick one out and it's Golden Rooster and I want to explain to you very briefly how you should adapt it as you're learning. So as I've said many times before, always adapt the move to where you are rather than where you would project yourself to be at the end of your training sometime. Um, the reason I do that is because it's much better for you as you're practicing to maintain a root, a connection to the ground and slowly develop that than the ability to be able to hold a posture at a certain point even though you're losing your balance and your root has disappeared long before you even got to it. And that's particularly the case in this move when you're coming up from squatting single whip where you can so easily lose that root in the transition into golden rooster. So I just wanted to recap very quickly that as you're coming from squatting goals, the squatting single whip and perhaps we'll look at that in another video, you're coming through to that. Really important that you keep that foot in connection with the ground, dragging it across almost like a sword on gravel. If any of you have done sword course, you'll remember that image that I used at the opening sequences. So this is helping you connect and stay grounded as the weight sinks deeply into that forward leg. And then the other hand is playing a really active part here. It's not waiting for what's going on on the other side. It's beginning to lay the foundations so that you're going to be able to confidently lift that arm and foot in a coordinated way. So as you're coming out of squatting single whip, weight into this front leg, sink down as you do so and use this hand for balance. Now I've got a chair here as a reminder for you. If you feel that this is a move in which you tend to lose your balance a lot, use something like this to help you steady yourself as you swing up into this move. Now as the right arm is moving into this upward position into the center of the body so too it should be moving the leg on the same side. As to the height of where this move goes it's not important whether you are knee to elbow separate or toe on the floor really isn't important some people will say it is because a b c d e more important for me is this idea that you are moving in a transition from one move one posture to another and that movement remains grounded and connected to the following move now that's not going to happen if as you come up you try to go up and then up and you say yeah I did two golden roosters so it really isn't anything to do with Tai Chi if that's your version of the posture it's much better to come here watch the foot still on the ground it's not even being lifted here and then sink back down sinking into that side and then come up the other side even though the toe has not left the ground this is a much better move, well grounded, well rooted and will really help your ability to flow from one move to another than the first version. Funny, I found myself doing when I came up then this which is a slightly curved outside foot curved in rounded version. You may think to yourself what is he doing? Quick story, 
the very first time I learned Tai Chi back in the 80s, I went to a style called Lam. And I worked with this guy in, I think it was in West London, for about a year, learning the Lam style, which was very nice, very flowery, before moving on to Yang. But I do remember him particularly coming up to this version of, uh, I think it was a breathing technique he did, but it seemed to be based on this golden rooster posture. Well, after I'd learned, stayed for a few more years around, as some of you know, I moved abroad and worked in Spain for a long time. And in the meantime, apparently, Lam goes and gets himself a Channel 4 series on Qigong, in which this posture, amongst many others, comes up. But because I was away, I never saw it, so perhaps some of you did and could help explain what is the link with Golden Rooster in that move with the Lam style, because I don't know it. Anyway, I hope this has been of use. If it has, leave a comment somewhere and I'll have a look at some of the other awkward positions in the form that we tend to stumble across as we transition from one to the other. That's it. Hope it's been useful. Let me know if it has below and uh, I'll see you in the next one.